Right, I'm back out in the garden and have some time to work on the Lindley's Garden Railway. Hi, I'm Warren Brand and welcome to another Lindley's video. Whilst planning this video, I replayed the last two in this mini-series and realised how confusing it may be if they're watched out of context. So, in this video, I'll make it all clear and explain what's going on around the Lindley station area. While I measure up for the front cover to go on this boxing here, let's break down the overall concept into the main aspects of work around the station. These are the track block sections with the train in section control, the train detection and signalling system, points control, and there are several to include, Bundles of electrical cables linking all the track bits back to the control box. The control box with all the various modules forming the DLC system, the Decentralised Logic Control System which I've developed for the Lindley's Garden Railway. The track plan diagram with all its indicators and labels. The control switches mimicking the lever frame in a traditional signal box. And all of the power supply units, comms modules and other bits. That's a lot. Oh yeah, that's a heck of a lot of stuff to work on just for this station area. So, whilst the outdoor version of Muggins here continues to work on the control box, this indoor voiceover one can talk about each of these aspects and give a little bit more detail. The DLC system uses block sections of track, just like in a traditional railway. The Linley station area has sections for approach, station limits and departure tracks for each of the four lines, so there are many blocks. This older video gives a good outline of how the block sections work, so take a look at this one if you've not seen it before. I will be referencing a few other videos and each are listed in the description notes below. It looks like the outdoor me is hanging the control panel using the hinges. Let's leave him again and continue on with looking at train detection and signalling. I've not described much yet about signal design and installations so far. There's more about that coming in later videos, but the train detection systems I have covered in several previous videos. This one is about the sensors and explains how the practical aspect of train detection is done. This video explains how the DLC system uses train position detectors in managing train movements. the Linley station there will be three groups of points. I've not focused on their control very much yet and indeed some more R&D is needed before I'm happy with the design of this part of the system. However, I've described in this video three junctions which are included in the full station area controlled from this signal box. Next down the list is cable bundle designs. Oh, so much work is needed with these. 
In this video, I've described the default design of a basic bundle for a single track circuit block. Like for the others, there's a link for this video in the description notes below. It looks like the outdoor me is getting ready to paint. He's doing quite well, don't you agree? If you do, please click the thumbs up button to send him some encouragement. It's cold out there. The control box containing all the modules has been the main feature in the most recent videos. And as you may appreciate, I need to work on finishing these units and fitting them out with all the necessary cables, modules, displays and switches. I'll continue to use the style of modules that I've been developing and this video shows them being installed in the signal box at Woodgate Crescent Station. I'll explain more about the design and construction of these modules in a later series of videos. The videos here cover the construction of Woodgate Crescent Station Panel and I plan to do exactly the same for this one, except this one will be larger and more complex of course. The style of track diagram will follow on to match the one I created for the Woodgate Crescent Station signal box mimic panel. While I'm cracking on outside with some more painting, it's worth talking about some of the next practical bits I plan to work on in this area during the forthcoming springtime months. I'm really keen to start running trains again from Easter and that's only about eight weeks away. To be able to do that, I need to relay a few bits of track that I recently lifted, but when I put it back down this time, I want as much of the systems cable fitted as I can manage. There's no way I'll have time to build all the DLC modules, but I'll be able to bypass some of the automation and be able to run trains through the station here anyway. So the next main jobs are to get the inner shelf structure fitted in the control module cabinet, the first set of the bundles of cables out to the track sections and a temporary test track panel diagram and some control switches. I can add modules, more functionality, a proper track diagram and switch panel later on. I can't do it all at once but bit by bit we'll get it done over time. While the outdoor Warren gets on with painting, let's look at the track diagram panel, which will go in the swinging out control box. The signalman, using that traditional term, sitting here will activate controls using switches instead of the old metal levers. Below the track panel diagram, there will be a row of switches in a mimic panel, a small version of the row of levers in a lever frame. These will be presented just like the set at Woodgate Crescent Station box. There will be switches for all the signals, points, as well as a range of additional operating controls. Lastly, I'll be including other power and system elements to keep the whole DLC system working in partnership with each other. And these include overall interlocking, done electronically to ensure conflicting routes are not set. Power distribution to the various modules, track side installations and track section motive power comm systems and other bits to assist interbox comms as well as some audio aspects. Mm -hmm. 
The control panel swings out on a hinge corner, so I can sit here, view the station area and monitor the track layout display and reach the lever switches. The upper portion will hold the track plan, with the indicator lights showing signal conditions, point settings and train positions. With most of the basic containment box dressed in its first coat of paint, let's look at the track diagram panel, which will go in the swing out control box. From this seating position, the signalman has a clear view to the right of the station area and can oversee all train movements. The track diagram will help describe where trains are on the tracks, just like in a traditional signal box by the indicator lamps on the track plan diagram. It looks like Warren is mostly finished for the day outside. He's done well again. Do take a look at some of the videos listed in the description notes below. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.